Last of all, you have a lot on your plate to chew. So. Well, let me start with um, the last scholar. <clears throat> and the, and I, I agree with you in terms of nothing should pass customs with foreign language and, and all. And like I said, I am hopefully in the not too distant future because I know sometimes the discussion of setting up a standard office at the port was um, on discussion and I don't know if that would be revisited and an area being designated at the Port Authority where they would have at least two officers who have been trained in testing for standards because I said CARICOM is now pressing on all member states to put in place these laws where you find that um, because we got in CSME so things must be in order um, so that I hope would be in place where the um, standard office is set up at the port and once a, any product that comes in do not meet the standard of the federation they cannot they would not um, pass them and I know customs is in agreement there because they have had a workshop with their certain items that they they um, check for and once they don't meet the standard they would inform the suppliers and they don't release them so that that is much I can say um, when it comes to the Chinese product and um, a lady calling and that's one of the problem we have been having with our culture where persons some persons agree some disagree but we all have to bear in mind that <clears throat> as a um, lady called it and said, if you go to a business place and you see a product that is all foreign language, leave it. Yes, you can do that, but that doesn't give the business places the right to be ordering all this stuff because some would buy it and some would ignore it and don't buy it. And I must say, we're going to try our endeavor best to continue and also to put forward to the powers being that they can put in place whatever legislation it requires to enforce the law to make sure that these business places if they are importing any items to be consumed or for services must be in English and whatever foreign language it is <laughs> to jump over to the person with the vehicles there's a special law that they call the Lehman Law, and I know some years ago we were trying to do an adoption <clears throat> that we can put in place the Lehman's Law Act because that's a special act different from a Consumer Affairs Act. It speaks to vehicles, dealership, and that sort of thing there. But yes, it was mentioned we were looking on it to do an adoption and have it set up just for our region, but I must say that it didn't go any further than a discussion and we didn't do anything but that I think can be looked at where we can do an adoption of the Lehman's law because we have a we, we are getting quite a few vehicles now on island and I think if that go in place it may help a lot of the persons who purchase vehicles to get a good deal on because some persons purchase vehicle and in less than a year the vehicles are broken down can be used because of, of a, um, a bad deal and I think if the Lehman's law going to place it may help some of the car dealers as well um, the labeling I also agree with the person when it talks about that and like I said the bureau standard I know they're being put it they have been working on putting in place the act we have an act about labeling but it needs to be enforced and I think that has been the old one has been repealed and the new one would be falling in line supposed to be I think the draft has already been in place I don't know if it's gone to the minister but I know that a draft is in place and hopefully those things would be forwarded to the minister where he can look at them cabinet can discuss them legal department would agree as to what measure is in them that would be enforcing on the consumers and also the business places so yes we are working in all these areas but it's not just it's not as easy as some of us may think by just saying oh they need to enforce this or they need to do this legislation and it's happened <coughs> overnight these things takes a lot of discussion because they have some reco um, reco uh, 
with compassion um, per yes. se. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they are not legally binded, it's going to look bad on the legal body that governs the country. And we can't afford to be having government putting out legislation or documents out there that say we're trying to protect consumers are trying to protect protect products or services when there's not much legal body that can say anything. So it's not just waking up and saying put in place and the need to put in place and this should put in place. But there are steps and these things that they have procedures and I must say that they are being looked into. Procedures would be put into place and sooner or later you'll be find that these things will be coming into place into play and they would have the the law because Back up, we are saying that CARICOM is pressing in all member states to harmonize consumer protection bill, standardization, and these sort of things. So all these are on the table. They have drafts for almost every one of them. And therefore, in the not too distant future, we would be seeing that all these things come to, come to fusion and legal binding that we can de defend consumers, protect consumers, as well as protecting the dealers and suppliers when it comes to businesses and services. Now, Mr. For while you spoke about goods, a lot of what we've been talking about is in terms of goods, but goods and services go together. And sometimes you have a nice good, but a very, very poor service. And what do you do or what do your department do if somebody comes with a complaint about poor service? Well, we have had... Um, because we are consuming services as we well. We have had several complaints when it comes to um, service providers. And it's a similar situation. The consumer come, file a complaint, fill out the form. We visit the establishment. Yes, we are. This consumer came and said, "Well, they bought a plate of food, and while eating, there was some object, foreign object in there." So, but several cases we find, and I said, as a consumer, if you have to ever file a complaint or you have any discrepancy with mm -hmm. either purchasing stuff for consume or services, address it in a manly order. I like how to tell people, you're spending your money and you, some persons get hot-headed very quick. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to disrespect me, I don't think you want any quiet settlement on that term. And so you find some persons, the consumer get arrogant, the business owner also. Some get arrogant or yes. some ignore. You understand? So... When it comes to services, yes, we have had persons come and file a complaint. And I may say, most of them that we have addressed, we had no problem. Because mm -hmm. one thing we like to tell people, you're having a business and you have to make sure that your consumers are satisfied. And if you're going to have one consumer who is dissatisfied, like some person say, oh, you're only one person, so my business is going to go on. But that one person can affect your business because one of the things that as in the con in the in the you know the right of a consumer coming, you inform other consumers, and once I gonna tell other consumers, don't buy at less white place because he food don't taste good and he got he and cockroach in it. Right, I your business gonna sack. I see that you have quite a a list there in terms of consumer rights and consumer responsibilities. Do you care to enlighten us of what some of those are? As we said, the um. There are eight rights of consumers, and these came into play by um, John F. Kennedy mm -hmm. way back in 1962 when he gave a public speech. Okay. And as he said, uh, we are consumers, uh, the largest to be affected, but the least to be heard. Yes. He put in place, and the, the rights, and they go like, the right to truthful and honest information about goods and services which are purchased. So whenever you're going to purchase anything or do any services, whoever the supplier or business owner be, should be giving you the truthful and honest information on that product. You got a right to choose between products of different qualities and prices. 
at no time if you go in a business place and if you see something that you don't want, don't let a yes. sale person force it on you. Because as a right, you're right, you have the right to choose between the product of the different qualities and the price. If you can't afford to live up two thousand dollars, don't buy it. Don't let them influence you in buying it. Okay? You got a right to save goods and services bought. And that is expect household product and children toys when using, you know, should be safe. You got a right to be heard to complain to a retailer if one is dissatisfied about a product or service. That's one of the thing. And please, consumers who are out there listening, if you have to complain, try as best as you can to complain as politely. Mm -hmm. You may there may be some fire burning in you. But count from 10, backward and forward, bring yourself down to earth, and you file a complaint. Because I know we have had some arrogant persons who have had complaint. And when we go to the business owner, and we try to put it over, say, well, they're being disrespectful, busting the battle, and you turn to the consumer, and they say, yes, we can't evict them. So we try to say, well, try to avoid that. You may be mad. If even if you walk out the store and come back in and say, well, sir, I would like to file a complaint, mm -hmm. this is situation, mm -hmm. kindly do that, because contention is not really the best way to go about it the right to address means the right to fair settlement of just claim it includes a right to receive compensation for misrepresentation shabby goods or unsatisfactory services the right to consumer education that is the right to acquire the knowledge and the skills to be informed and to be an assertive consumer the right to healthy and sustainable environment means the right to a physical environment that will enhance the quality of life. It includes protection against environmental dangers over which individual has no control. And even that, we like to tell persons that, I mean, you live in an environment, you're supposed to be able to keep it clean. Don't just sit on the pen and say, well, oh, you got persons out there who mm -hmm. getting paid for doing it. Because if I'm going to live in an environment and everybody going to come throwing the garbage there, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get sick. It's gonna affect me. So then you have the right to make sure that you live in a healthy and a sustainable environment. The right to satisfaction of basic needs to have the access to basic essential goods and services, adequate food, clothing, shelter, health care, education and sanitation. And you know that's that's a tough one because I mean it, it falls in line that the government has to make sure that as a consumer, one of your your right as to satisfaction of basic needs is is key. Education, adequate yeah. food, <clears throat> you know, health so, care, so, so education the, and sanitation. So the my question to you is as a department, um, one of its services is the procurement of adequate adequate supplies of basic commodities and the establishment of appropriate distribution channels. Well, that's one reason why from the government end, they look at the basic goods that a family of four could afford to purchase. And that's why they had it narrowed on the price and they put the back up on this item that, just let me say for radically sake, a poor man yes. should be able to walk in a supermarket and purchase a pound of corn pound of sugar, pound of flour, a milk, and that sort of stuff there. Because those are basic, basic items that, you know, as as a consumer, you right should have access to that. And that's why government try their endeavor best to make sure education, sanitation, health. Now you mentioned stay. something interesting, this thing about sanitation. Because I have heard, you know, for example, some people who sell in food. I mean, the way that they keep their kitchens, the cockroaches, the, 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 the rats and so on, how can you, as a provider of a service, and especially if you're in the food service, have that sort of poor sanitation? I mean, consumers really have to know their rights and to know what they're into. Well, I know, I know health department do go out and do inspection, and if it's one thing, they don't have a workshop. Persons who have, you must have a food handler's permit if you're going to be selling any right. food for consumption purposes. And they do keep workshop. 
they do inspection anybody find you know violating those rights or anything like that they would stop them and i know there were cases where we had a particular um restaurant and um customer came to me and filed a complaint that she went and she bought some food and while eating she saw parts of the road tree Ooh, that so happened to me once <laughs> I went to the um, establishment and I said, well, the consumer came and said they bought some food here and while eating it, they saw. The person was kind of very, trying to play hardball. I explained to them and stuff like that. And, and at the same time, while I'm there talking to them, Roach is running up the wall. Mm. So I said, Those are, that's what I'm talking about. You see them? Not over that. When I looked down on the floor, a rat fly into the back where they're preparing the food stuff and I said hello you know when I got there and I said nah this thing can't work they did a report and I called health department the next day they shut the establishment down because health went in and do an inspection and it was not so they had to shut it down mm -hmm. sanitize they had to <coughs> clean up throw all the stuff they had there and sanitize, sterilize the place and everything. So this, you know, these are things that we're working in collaboration with sure. this other department to make sure that these things are. Sure. What are some place. of the, the responsibilities of the consumer? You 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 outlined the, the rights, rights, but what yeah. are the responsibilities? As a consumer, <laughs> your rights. You got a responsibility to protect oneself by shopping carefully and wisely. Understanding the terms of sale, and when we say understanding the terms of sale, and there are times when you go to business places and they have stuff up for sale. And even though we go to business places, because we don't have persons, we have companies, we have to adjust those matters. And one thing we ask persons, do we explain to them the reason why you have these product or these items on sale? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, it doesn't make any sense. You have them yes. there because you have to it and. Even they don't tell you, we said to consumer, ask question. And that's why you say understand the terms of sale, regardless of what items on sale are regular, understand what you're putting, you're paying your money for. Right? Reading and following instructions, something that a lot of us don't do. And when we run into problem, we blame yes. the product or the item or the business plan. But if we read and follow <coughs> instructions, we safeguard ourselves, we secure whatever item we get. Getting guarantees in writing is another thing when something you're going to purchase certain items, especially a lot of electrical appliances, let them give you the guarantee in writing. Mm -hmm. Because I know I had to deal with an establishment where persons are buying electrical appliances and they're telling you they give you three weeks. I said, um, when you look at it, three weeks is not long enough for me purchasing any electrical item. And most manufacturers give six months, mm -hmm. some to a year. And what we request, there are some who honors manufacturing guarantees, some put in place there. Sure. But the lease is like three weeks, come on. <laughs> Collect and save receipts. That is the responsibility of a consumer. Collect and save your receipt. Again, understanding the term of sale, ask question at the point of sale. It doesn't hurt to ask a question. It benefits you, mm -hmm. it benefits the business place. It saves your money, it saves your time. Keep informed about new products. Also, another responsibility, carrying out transaction in a business-like manner, such as reporting on satisfactory product to retailers and manufacturers in order that they may remove from the shelf and future production. So that is also a responsibility of a, um, a consumer. Another responsibility, and we find this very um, challenging, to tell other consumers about any unfair treatment by a retailer or manufacturer <coughs> so consumers could protect themselves in future dealing. And why I say that, it's a tricky because like you find, and I said, there's some person that say, oh, you're only one person. And that's why I said, if you are only one person, I can influence hundreds. Your business got on the drain. So, as a responsibility as a consumer, you can inform other consumer, but be do it in such a way that, hey, you're not trying to bring down the business plan yes. because some person saying you're trying to destroy the business and it's not really that. But it's just to protect other consumers from future dealings. 
The responsibility to report apparently unsafe merchandise to consumer protection bodies so that they could be tested and if necessary removed from the market to be more specifically labeled. There are times we have persons who either come into the department or call and they will go like, I don't really want to get anybody in trouble but I just want to ask a question. I just want to know if I have my rights, if I have any rights. And I went to a certain establishment and Sansa took place and whatever. Could you give me the name? No, 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 I really want to get a body in trouble. But you're not getting anybody mm -hmm. in any trouble. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that you're also protecting the business place as well as safeguarding consumers. Yes. So, I mean, I, you're responsible to report apparently unsafe merchandise to consumer protection bodies. Also, responsibility to maintain and preserve a healthy environment for future generations. It goes back to the supporting yes. your rights you know, to a sustainable, healthy and sustainable environment. If we don't keep our environment clean, then... I we want to add health, well. another one. You have the right to get back your correct change. You know that? The some responsibility tell, of the man in the best value. Tell you, oh, I don't have, I don't, I don't have no one cent, but that one cent is yours. No, but they, no, they shouldn't be telling you that. It's you as a consumer, right? You say, okay, don't bother with it, but they don't tell me mm -hmm. you don't have a one cent. And they know they're, they're finished with the one cent. They have the round off, round up, round down. Right. And that's another thing that the authorities dealing with that, we try to tell them, well, they give us information because persons come to a consumer con department on that matter and people must check their change well that is another thing but there's some person they just grab and go and then when you reach home you realize look who fault it ten dollars shot you but know? who fault it is you as a consumer another thing we saying they have monitors that you see, um you go to a supermarket they have a monitor for the cashier a monitor for the consumer it's always wise to follow up on the monitor to make sure that if you pick up X amount of items off the shelf for X amount of money, it should show up on the monitor. Mm -hmm. Because there are times that person says only when they reach home. And it had happened to me. And what has happened to me, Mr. Four as well, is that I have looked on my receipt. And sometimes what happens is that you pick up one item, but they have it on the receipt twice. So you really have to check your receipt. Because the person who is doing the punching in... Yeah. Sometimes some of them, some of them don't. Scan, some, of, some of them just scan twice. They scan twice. Once, it once, but scan twice. Right. And that's where you get it. And so you have to look at your receipt. Because sometimes you're actually paying more. Exactly. Than you should be actually paying. So that receipt and paying attention to your, your change and all of that it's is important. very, very important. Yeah. Now, Mr. Four, we are almost out of time. But um, there's something I want to ask you. If you can tell us. Um, in a nutshell, you did mention that March 15th was consumer, World, uh, World Consumer, World consumer Rights, Rights Day. Day. And under the theme of um, antibiotics off the menu, could you just, in a nutshell, tell us what um, that is? Uh, the theme this year for um, World Consumer Rights Antibiotics off the menu, what Consumer International and the World Health Organization had observed and through research that a lot of the farmers, agriculture farmers who farm animals for chicken, turkey, <coughs> beef, pigs, whatever, sure. for them to get their products so fast, what they found out is that they're injecting these animals with antibiotic to mature them faster that they can get themselves. So what they're finding out now that we the consumers have to buy chicken, burgers, Beef. turkey sandwich and that sort of stuff. And we consuming all of these antibiotics. Now if we as a consumer happen to get sick and go to the doctor for a simple illness which requires antibiotics to cure that. Get a prescription from the doctor, go to the drugstore, purchase a prescription, the, the antibiotic. It's no use to us because of the fact that consuming all of these chicken and beef and whatever that had been injected with all these antibiotics by their farmers, our body have now come accustomed to Immune. it. Immune. So what we, what 
Consume International and World Health Organization realize that in the years to come, that more persons going to be dying from simple illness because the antibiotic prescribed by the doctor would not cure it to the fact that all these products on the menu are being injected with antibiotics so we are consuming it and now our body is just immune to, to the antibiotics so it won't be any help to us sure. so they are you know I'm, I'm trying to call into all those fast food products to stamp down on their farmers I'm not buying your product if you're having animals being injected with all these so, antibiotics so, so, so it's a two-way thing um, basically in educating consumers and that education really reaches out, not just about in terms of what we consume, but in terms of our health. Yeah. Okay, and that what we consume affects us. I used to hear that basically you are what you eat. Exactly. People used to say that. And recently as well, the World Health Organization said that a lot of these processed foods, mm -hmm. for example, contain sodium nitrite and all of this sort of a thing that they have discovered processed foods to be cancer causing yep so the thing about it is that we have to consume but at the very same time one of the most powerful right and responsibility of the consumer is that you have the power to choose what you consume exactly isn't that so yes it is and so therefore in parting with us, Mr. Four, we have had a very lively discussion today. Do you have any words of advice for the consumer? Do you have anything that you want to say before we leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say to the consumers, um, and I must say before I go into that, thanks for giving the Department of Consumer Affairs the opportunity to come here and enlighten consumers. As, and I trust that this afternoon discussion was very interesting and enlightening to consumers listening out there back again your rights understand know and understand your rights and your responsibilities ask questions at point of sale don't be forced into purchasing anything or and that you don't want and based on the um the top the team for this year we try as much as possible to tell consumers try and stay away from a lot of the fast food product mm -hmm. and you know that in itself because World Health Organization has predicted that um, in the years to come, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase by 2030, where antibiotic use in agriculture is due to increase by two-thirds by 2030. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in a grave den, <laughs> but they're looking at, you know, by 2030, you know, farmers would be increasing their product. So what they're trying to do is to get consumers to be, you know, the driving force behind sure. these agriculture, these farmers, to, to let them know. Stop putting antibiotics into the animals for them to mature quicker so you can sell your product. Yes, you can inject them with the antibiotic if they are sick, but if you're going to keep giving an animal antibiotics every day to get it fat, to sell me a good pound, a good leg of meat, well, they're money, concerned with the, any sense. Yeah, it's profit making. But yeah, the but consumer has to be smart. But then, if the consumers are not there to purchase this stuff, how are you going to get money? Precisely. So you drive them out of business. Existence. Well, I want to thank you so much, You're Mr. Welcome. Four, for being on our program it's today. It's a pleasure. Um, we did have a very interesting discussion, one that is, of course, of some use because we are all consumers within um, our society. Yep. And what we consume eventually will kill us. Thanks. We all will die, but at the very same time, what we consume can make us live a little bit longer That's true. As, as well. And consumers must know about their rights and consumers must know about their responsibilities. I want to thank all the callers and all of you who listened to today's program. This has been another edition of Working For You. I am your host, Les Roy Williams. We will see you next week. Have a good afternoon.
working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Davis government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Davis. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, with FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you.